Hello and welcome to From Clinic to Home. I'm Caitlin Watson. I'm an occupational therapist at Summit Therapy and this is From Clinic to Home. This is our way for pediatric therapists to stay connected with families and children in Pullman and beyond. Uh, today we're going to talk about emotional regulation. Now this is a huge topic and one that's really hard to give justice to during a short video. However, um, in the OT field, we often get referrals from doctors for kiddos that are having a hard time regulating those emotions. And we wanna be able to give you some strategies to use at home during this time of stay home, stay healthy. Especially now during this time where our emotions have been stressed and uh, stretched to the extremes. So we're gonna talk about today um, three strategies. One is the use of physical spaces, two, would be heavy work activities, and then three, some really good breathing strategies for those times when those emotions just get really big. Now, we are always open for comments and feedback, or if you have a topic you'd like us to review, please email me at caitlin.watson at pullmanregional.org. In the meantime, let's talk about emotional regulation. What is emotional regulation? From an OT perspective, emotional regulation is the ability to manage emotions so that a child can be ready to learn and effectively respond to the environment. If your kiddo goes to Pullman School District, he or she will likely be familiar with the training that's called the Zones of Regulation. This was created by an OT, Leah Coopers, and kind of breaks our emotions down into four different zones. In the blue zone, this is where we feel sad and tired, blah, bored, low energy, basically a low state of alertness. The green zone is our ready to learn state. We are ready to learn and interact and respond to that environment. Uh, emotions are calm, happy. There is a strong sense of internal control. The yellow zone is where those feelings of worry and anxiety start to come in. Maybe the kiddo's starting to escalate or get fidgety or off task, maybe frustrated or get a little bit of silliness or fear. There's some sense of internal control, but that is starting to diminish. The red zone is when the kiddo is out of control. This can either be mad and angry and yelling, or it could be just so crazy and overly hyper. They're really not able to learn or respond to their environment in an effective way. So the goal of emotional regulation is to stay in that green zone. But remember, there is absolutely nothing wrong with feeling all the feelings and all those big emotions in the other zones. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it is a good thing when kids feel all those feelings and even better when they can verbalize what they're feeling. Those are really important developmental skills. It's just really hard to learn and really hard to respond well to an environment when we're in those other zones besides the green zone. It just doesn't feel good. And if I think about some of the strategies I've used just this week alone to be in my green zone, I've taken a really fast walk. I've called a friend. I did some yoga. I escaped the house on an errand just so I could be by myself. I cried. I wrote a letter. I took um, just some time to myself to breathe. This is something that we do at every stage and every age of life. Uh, but for kids, here's some strategies to use at home. Finding a physical space for each child is probably more important now than it has been before. We are in the state of stay home, stay healthy, and families don't get a break from each other. Um, and it does help to have a quiet space that you can call your own. This goes for parents and kids alike. So try to find a dedicated space for each child. A goal would be to limit the visual and auditory stimuli so that it's a calming space. It can be any type of space that will resonate with the child. You could call it a fort or a hideout, a bat cave, a quiet corner, a castle, a calm down tent, whatever would feel a really safe and regulating space for that child. Even small spaces can have um, some privacy. This is a simple uh, blanket clipped to the top bunk so that the bottom bunk becomes a real safe space for a kid. You can add soft lights maybe twinkle lights or a flashlight. 
And then as far as auditory input, try to use something that's really calming. Mozart is always a go-to music for calming uh, music or try some nature sounds. Provide some calming activities. This helps redirect kids into um, a more calm emotional state. Books and doodling. Uh, doodling has been shown by research to have a very calming effect on the sensory system. Add calming textures like a favorite stuffed animal, some squishy toys, and something with a flippy material. That sequence that flips back and forth can be very calming for a kiddo. Uh, a weighted rice bag or a weighted blanket, any type of cozy snuggle blanket, and then a love note from a parent can be really reassuring for a kid. Provide some ways for the kiddo to get frustrations out in a safe way. And you can write or scribble or you know angry draw on a piece of paper and crumple it up and throw it away or uh, tear up some tissues and into teeny tiny little pieces um, or some squishy balls some stress balls would be a good thing to add as well get outside if the weather is uh, allowing us to get outside like it is these days get outside have the kiddo climb a tree or swing in a hammock or take a walk this is regulating for all people no matter your age for an excellent book that talks about the importance of physical spaces, check out My Very Own Space by Pippa Goodhart and illustrations by Rebecca Crane. It's a beautiful book that talks about um, the importance of having a space of your own to regulate and then be able to return to um, a more social environment. The second strategy is considering the use of heavy work activities. Heavy work is anything that puts a lot of pressure um, and input in through our joints. This is a go-to strategy for therapists for providing some regulating activities um, because it works on the nervous system to bring some calm and some organization. Heavy work activities, are, there are so many ideas online. If you just Google proprioception or heavy work activities, you'll get a long list of ideas. But here's a few to get you started. Animal walks are some of my favorite quick regulating activities. Bear crawls, crab walks, stomp like an elephant, donkey kicks, bunny jumps. Here's a handout that has a seven minute uh, workout for kids. You do each movement for 45 seconds and then take a 15 second rest. Kids love acting like this and especially if a parent does it along with them. Or do a wacky wall walker. This is where you put your hands on the floor and climb your feet up the wall and hold it for three to 10 seconds. This was Palouse Empire Gymnastics signature move. So thanks to them for teaching me this move. Chores, incorporate those kids into your daily chore routines. They can be helpers too and they really love being helpers around the house. Have them carry grocery bags, gallons of milk in from the car. Um, they can push or carry a laundry basket. You can pretend to be a train driver as they're pulling the laundry basket behind them. Or ice skating on a towel to help mop the floor. Just put a towel, one towel beneath their feet and they kind of shimmy back and forth along the floor pretending to be an ice skater. Mealtime. Remember that mealtime can be a really great way to sneak in some heavy work activities throughout the day. Crunchy and chewy foods are going to make uh, that heavy work in the jaws, drinking through a straw, um, and then cold drinks are typically alerting, um, and then warm drinks are usually calming. The third strategy we'll talk about is deep breathing. This is a great way to redirect and get back to that green zone. Vivian has a kinetic ball and she's going to show us how she's going to breathe in when she expands that ball and breathe out when it collapses. This is one of my favorite visual tools to help kids really focus and take those big deep breaths. Now if you don't have a kinetic ball at home, that's okay because you have fingers. Our family's favorite way to do deep breathing is birthday candle breathing. Now Vivian is eight, she's gonna be nine on her next birthday, so I'm gonna hold up nine fingers. She's gonna take a big breath in. I'm gonna blow that candle out. It doesn't count if they go too fast. Those candles don't go down. And if you feel like your kiddo just needs a little extra time, they can be trick candles, pop and pop back up, and then they get another try to do it again. It's important to remember there are many layers to emotional regulation. 
there's development and behavior and sensory, there's neurology, there's also anxiety and depression. If you think your child is struggling with anxiety or depression, please reach out to your pediatrician or primary care doctor. They are eager to help. We also can't fully address the subject of emotional regulation without acknowledging the presence of grief and loss during this time. My favorite book to talk about grief with children is this one. It's called When Something Terrible Happens, Children Can Learn to Cope with Grief. It's written by Marge Hegard and illustrated by children. The book provides opportunity for kids um, to talk about their feelings by drawing or coloring. Um, they're just blank pages and I really recommend um, you looking into this book. I'll show you one example. It's talking about feelings being stuffed inside for too long that it can actually make your body hurt. And it provides the child an opportunity to maybe color where maybe they have some pains in their bodies. It also talks about uh, grief that comes in waves. Um, it's unpredictable. It talks about changes between before and now. And also talk gives the child an opportunity to think about what a good situation might be again. And talk about that in a way that is really safe for children and honestly for adults as well. During the season of Stay Home, Stay Healthy, we are cheering for you and we are here for you. Please reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.